Welcome to Evening Prayer from the Parish of St Leonard's Glapthorne on the ninth Sunday after Trinity. As we've seen in the past two weeks, the central theme of the apocryphal book, Ecclesiasticus, is wisdom. Wisdom is both personified and presented as identical with the law. And this provokes the fascinating question of whether this is akin to the depiction in John's Gospel of Jesus as the personification of the Word, or Logos, the divine rationality at the heart of creation. Today's reading from chapter 42 reinforces that idea. Its sweep is universal and majestic. God's Word is identified with the creation of the cosmos, saying, By the Word of the Lord his works are made. This echoes the first creation story in Genesis, where God speaks the universe into being. We find it elsewhere in the Old Testament. Psalm 33, verse 6 is an example. And of course, in the New Testament, there is this sublime hymn with which John's Gospel begins and to which I've already referred. The reading continues with a breathtaking account of God's omnipotence and omniscience, unchanging and beyond the constraints of time, which even the angels of the heavenly host can't adequately describe. The cosmos exemplifies the splendours of God's eternal wisdom, not only in being aesthetically desirable, but in being symmetrically ordered by divine rationality and expressing divine purpose. By this creation is both beautiful and infused with God-given meaning. The New Testament lesson is from Luke chapter 12. Luke consistently expresses concern for the poor and marginalised. Here, the other side of that coin is considered, the priorities of those with ample means. Jesus, as a teacher might expect, is asked to interpret the law and apply it to an actual family dispute over inheritance. The questioner might have had in mind the the precise prescription to be found in Deuteronomy chapter 21. Jesus makes clear that he's not that kind of judge or arbitrator. In a parable, he warns that life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Speaking of the fragility of physical life and the deeper obligation to be rich towards God. God himself makes a rare parable appearance calling the rich man a fool, biblical dismissal of those who reject God's wisdom, as, for example, we see in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 32. The rich man's treasure is not just worthless in the eyes of God, it has separated him from God. Luke is not just saying something rather obvious about the risk of being distracted by the pursuit of worldly wealth. He seems to be making two further associated points. First, Material possessions are held in trust or stewardship and should be properly used for the common good. And second, a common Lucan theme, that there is real urgency about conforming oneself to the coming kingship of God and with it judgment, which could happen at any moment. Evening Prayer When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, 
Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verses 15 to 25. I will now call to mind the works of the Lord, and will declare what I have seen. By the word of the Lord his works are made, and all his creatures do his will. The sun looks down on everything with its light, and the work of the Lord is full of his glory. The Lord has not empowered even his holy ones to recount all his marvellous works, which the Lord the Almighty has established, so that the universe may stand firm in his glory. He searches out the abyss and the human heart. He understands their innermost secrets. For the Most High knows all that may be known. He sees from of old the things that are to come. He discloses what has been and what is to be, and he reveals the traces of hidden things. No thought escapes him and nothing is hidden from him. He has set in order the splendours of his wisdom. He is from all eternity one and the same. Nothing can be added or taken away, and he needs no one to be his counsellor. How desirable are all his works, and how sparkling they are to see. All these things live and remain forever. Each creature is preserved to meet a particular need. All things come in pairs, one opposite to the other, and he has made nothing incomplete. Each supplements the virtues of the other. Who could ever tire of seeing his glory? Here endeth the Old Testament lesson. The Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts, he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, 
verses 13 to 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Here endeth the New Testament lesson. The Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light, to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Collect for the Ninth Sunday After Trinity Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee, the spirit to think and do always such things as be rightful, that we, who cannot do anything that is good without thee, may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Peace O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. The Collect for Aid Against All Perils Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now a time of private prayer, when we can bring before God anything that we're worried about, those things for which we should be thankful. Anyone known to us who especially needs our prayers, and not forgetting to pray for ourselves.
Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>